Hello everyone, it's me Uncle John. Today I am going to read chap S3, S6, 63, 6003 Water Wishes. Chapter 5 Tail, Tail. Sam stared at the tail that looked up at Polly's face. He couldn't figure out if she was crying or if it was the rain. Then she laughed. It works, Sam, she crowed. It works. Just then a voice rang out. Sam, Polly, get inside immediately. They both looked up. Their dad was standing on the deck of the house. How are you going to get inside? Sam asked. Polly stopped smiling. Polly, Sam, where are you? Now their dad sounded worried. I'll get Joe. Sam decided. Polly wrinkled her nose, but she didn't say no. Coming, she, Sam shouted to dad. Polly made a shooing motion at him. Quick, I'll be fine out here for a while. The rain is wonderful. Sam ran toward the house. Polly looked down at her tail and shivered with excitement. She ran a finger along the shining scales. It was weird. Her scales felt cold to her fingers, and her fingers felt hot to her scale. Polly flapped the tail experimentally. She decided that, except for walking, she didn't miss her legs at all. The tail felt so much stronger than her legs ever had. Polly looked through the rain toward the choppy waves. She closed her eyes and imagined how the water would feel. The tug of the tide pulling her in. Below the waves, the sea would be still, not like the stormy surface. As a mermaid, she wouldn't have to worry about breathing on the water. She would breathe the water itself. Or what mermaids? Like dolphins and whales? Mammals that had to come up for air? Well, she could figure out, she, she could figure that out when she was in the water. She had to get to the water. She could feel it calling to her. Polly thought crawling seemed undignified, but she didn't see any other way to do it. She rolled over onto her stomach. Slowly, the study, she started pulling herself over the wet sand toward the waves crashing on the shore. Door slammed behind Sam as he ran, dripping to Joe's room. Hey, you're getting my floor wet, Joe said, looking up from his comic book, but he pulled his earphone off to hear what Sam had to say. You gotta help Polly get inside, Sam said. What are you talking about? Get Polly first, Sam said. Joe gave Sam a hard look, then he swung his legs over the side of the bed and got up. Sam told him where Polly was while Joe put his raincoat on. I'll go, but you better go upstairs and tell mom and dad you are here, said Joe. Sam knew they were probably in trouble. Outside, Joe forged his way through the rain to the dune. Polly wasn't there. Those kids had tricked him. The little brat, he was turning back to the house when a movement on the beach caught his eye. He couldn't make out what it was through the rain, but he could see that it was moving toward the water. Could it be a person? What if Polly had somehow fallen down the dune? The fear gripped him. He ran down the dune. As he got closer, he recognized Polly's purple t-shirt. She had a shimmery towel wrapped around her leg. She was pulling herself forward with her arms. What's going on? She shouted as he reached his struggling sister. Polly looked up at Joe through the pelting rain. I have to get to the water, she said. What are you talking about? yelled Joe. We are in the middle of a storm. You can't go into the water. Mom and Dad would kill you. No, Joe, I really have to, she told him. The rain isn't enough. I just have to get to. Come on, Polly, get up. Let's go. I'm not playing games. You can't fool Sam, but you can't fool me. No, really, said Polly. I can't walk. I'm a mermaid, and I need to swim. Help me get to the water. You have got to be kidding, Joe said. Go ahead. Pretend you are a mermaid if it makes you happy, but you're going back to the house, even if I have to carry you. Polly looked at the crashing waves. They were reaching for her, but so was Joe. He bent down and got one arm under her shoulders and the other under her legs. He was amazed by how much they really did feel like a tail. Luckily, Joe was strong for his age and the house wasn't far. He half carried and half dragged her over the sand. 
The short flight upstairs to the bottom floor was the hardest. When they got inside, Joe let Polly go. She dropped to the ground and glared up at him. She pointed to her tail. Look, she said, I told you. Joe gaped slowly. He crouched down beside Polly, ran his finger over the scales. Wow, he said, wow, Polly smiled. Upstairs, they could hear voices. Then Sam's rose loudly above the rest. Polly is in the bath, he almost shouted. She was cold. Polly and Joe looked at each other. Joe grabbed Polly under the arms and dragged her into the bathroom. He had to get in the tub himself to pull her in. Frantically, Joe turned the taps up as high as they could go. Polly poured the whole bottle of bubble bath into the water. I'll go see if I can stall them some more, Joe said. He ran out of the bathroom. Polly sat in the tub and watched as the water and bubbles slowly covered the tail. It felt delicious. Polly lifted her tail out of the water and admired the shiny scale. They were silvery blue when she turned the tail one way and silvery green when she turned it the other. She splashed it to make more bubbles. Suddenly, the bathroom door opened. It was mom. Polly plunged her tail beneath the bubbles and tried to look innocent. Polly, what's going on? Stop splashing. You're getting water everywhere. Why do you have your t-shirt on in the bathtub? Polly looked down. She had forgotten to take it off. She looked back at mom. Oh, oh, dad. That's because, because, mom prompted, because Sam and I were playing a game. Polly said it was partly true, she figured. Mom lifted an eyebrow as Polly squirmed. That's why we didn't know where you were and why there's water all over the place. Polly nodded. Sam's head appeared in the doorway. He took one look at his mother and ducked out. We're sorry, Polly said, hanging her head. She sank deeper into the tap. She closed her eyes. The water felt so good. She wondered if it might be better with a little salt added. Polly, her mother said, a note of concern creeping into her voice. Polly's eyes snapped open. What, what? She had forgotten where she was for a moment. Are you sure you're okay? Mom asked. You look a little spacey. Maybe it's time to get out of the hot water. No, said Polly. Startling both her mother and herself with her, her forcefulness, she added as normally as she could, I'd like to stay in just a little longer, please. I love the water. The bubbles were touching the rim of the tub. Mom turned off the faucet. Mom smiled softly. I know what you mean. She had uh, the faraway look on her face. Then she looked back at Polly. But take off their shirt. And you kids are going to have to clean up all the water in the hole. I know. We will. Mom gave Polly a stunned look. Then she went out. She's shutting the door behind her. Back in Sam and Polly's room. She was pumping Sam for information. How did pa Polly get the tail? Sam wasn't sure how much to tell. Joe's eyes were shining. Tell me, what, I know you and Polly were playing some kind of game, but this this is more than a game. Joe's eyes were shining. He looked so excited that Sam couldn't hold back. It was the bottle, he said. What do you mean the bottle, said Joe. You know, the bottle from the ocean. What? Said Joe. His mouth dropped open. You took my bottles. My bottle, said Sam. Then he added, mine and Polly's. Your kids are going to have to, oh, wait a minute. My bottle? Then he added, mine and Polly's. Wait a, wait one second. I was the one who pulled it out of the water. You guys were too busy drowning. Yeah, but I just can't believe that you'd sneak into my room like... Joe couldn't think of anything bad enough to compare his brother and sister to. I just can't believe it wasn't like that. Sam interrupted, and what's the bottle have to do with uh, what's happening? Joe went on. He towered over Sam. Huh? Well... He gave us three wishes. There was a piece of paper and rules to follow and everything, and we tried to make them work. They didn't. The Polly wished to be a mermaid, and, and she was a mermaid. Just then, the, they heard Polly. She was calling quietly from the bathroom. Joe's mind was spinning with a combination of excitement about the magic and resentment and not having been a part of, part of it. He closed his eyes and took a couple of deep breaths.
We better go help her, he said, but don't forget. I want to know everything, everything. Sam nodded, grinning. Polly was just sitting on the bathroom floor, wrapped in a towel. She was uh, staring at her tail, which uh, shimmered brightly. She looked up with a hopeful expression when she saw Sam and Joe in the doorway. I didn't want to get out. She said, but I thought that you could help me down to the ocean. No way. I don't care if you are a mermaid. It's dangerous out there. We'll help you to the bathroom. Polly frowned, but there is no water here. Grab an arm, Joe told Sam. They pulled Polly into the bathroom, bedroom. I want to be by the window, she said. Yes, your highness, said Joe. Can you open the window, Polly asked as she settled into the chair. But it's raining, said Sam. I know, I want to feel it. Being a mermaid is making you crazy. You're just jealous. Polly said, sticking her tongue out at Joe. Joe looked at her, shook his head. You're only a mermaid because you stole my bottle. It's not yours, Sam broke in. As Joe turned to glare at Sam, Sam quickly added, Don't you want to know about the wishes? Joe looked wearily from Sam to Polly and back again. Yeah, explain. So Sam and Polly explained. Actually, Sam did most of the talking because Polly had her hard time turning away from the window. Joe listened to it with all with a hungry expression on his face. When Sam got to the part about finding parchment, Joe wanted to see it. I guess it's still out there, Sam said, pointing to the window. Maybe I should get it. What if it gets lost? There was a crack of lightning, quickly followed by a roar of thunder. Stealthy rain blew through the window. Polly lifted her face to it and sighed. Joe shut the window. No, said Polly. The floor is getting all wet. Aren't you in enough trouble already? Polly pressed her wet face to the window. She sighed again, but seemed a little more alert. I don't think you should go out. Besides, I know exactly what it says. Sam repeated the words on the parchment. It's incredible, he said. Sam realized that he could ask Joe a few things that, that had been bugging him. What are elements exactly? A long time ago, people called fire, water, earth and air elements. And the element sometimes means weather or things like iron and oxygen. Water, said Polly. It's got to be. Yeah, I think so too. Okay, now tell me what fine print means. Fine print means the smallest word, said Joe. We read those. Tell me the rest, said Joe. Polly told him about all the wishes they had tried. She and Sam started to laugh. When they thought of trying to fly, Joe watched them giggle hysterically. Stop it. Tell me the next thing. They told him about the rest of the failed wishes and then how the battle had seemed dead until the sun hit it. That must be part of the magic, Joe said. You need sunlight. Finally, they got to the part about the meter mermaid wish, and you know the rest. Now, I, can I go out? Joe looked thoughtful. How close to the ocean were you when you made the wish? He asked. Not that close. We were up on the dunes. Could you see the water? Asked Joe. Yeah, Sam and Polly said together. I bet that's part of it too, Joe mused. Water is the element, and you have to be in its presence. Sam was impressed. Joe looked back from Sam to Polly. You know, he said, if you had told me about it to begin with, I could have helped. Help. Just then the light went out. Uh-oh, said Sam. Polly flapped the tail. Wait here, said Joe. He felt his way to the door. He opened it and waited for his eyes to adjust to the darkness. He could hear people moving around and bumping into things upstairs. Suddenly a faint golden glow boomed at the top of the step. Ta-da, said Tom. Candle just in time for a lovely dinner. Kids, called mom, dinner time. Joe went back to Sam and Polly's room. Did you hear that? He asked. Polly was pulling a nightgown over her head. Joe groaned. This isn't fair. You took my bottle. I have to rescue from the beach. Now I have to carry you. Mom appeared in the doorway, holding a candle. Come on, she said. I'll lead you upstairs. Joe made a seat for Polly out of the arm. Mom's eyes broke. Rose, what's this? Oh, we are playing that I'm a mermaid princess, said Polly airily. Joe, too. My man surprised. We couldn't do it without him, declared Sam. Joe rolled his eyes. No kidding. After dinner, the wind died down and the rain beat softly on the window. They all played the board games in the living room by candlelight. The lights came back on while Mom was reading Peter Pan aloud. Polly kept the tail covered with her nightgown the whole time. When it was time for Dad, Dad carried her downstairs. 
Do you feel like a real mermaid? He said. He talked to Polly and Sam in it. Mom kissed him goodnight. Light came in through the window. The storm had stopped. The clouds had cleared. The moon was almost full. Water. Polly whispered sleepily, Polly, do you think we'll get another wish tomorrow? But Polly had fallen asleep. Sam closed his eyes, drifted off to the sound of Polly's breathing, which rose and fell like the waves. In his own room, Josta stared at the ceiling. The magic had given him some ideas of his own. The end.